Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're live in North Carolina with the latest after authorities declared a state of emergency after they say someone shot up two electric substations, leaving about 45,000 customers in the dark. And then all eyes are on the Supreme Court this morning as they hear arguments in a case pitting same-sex marriage against religious freedom. And two of the stars of the U.S. men's soccer team are live in Times Square following their incredible performances at the World Cup. You're going to see all that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Looking ahead, the holidays are all about giving, and you've got a chance to do just that during the Salvation Army annual Parade of Kettles from now until midnight Christmas Eve. Case out will be competing to raise the most money to help families in the Bear County area all year long. Scan this QR code, and it will take you to our donation page. I want to let you know that power outage in Leon Valley has now been resolved. Right now it's three till ahead in our next hour. GMSA, a big case at the Supreme Court today involving LGBTQ rights. We'll tell you what's at stake. And Trans Guide right now. Live look at 410 and San Pedro. Heavy fog throughout the metro area. We'll get through the morning together right here on GMSA. Ahead this hour, former Texas police officers set to go on trial for shooting a woman through the window of her home while responding to a call about an open door. We'll tell you more about it. Fan fallout continues after Ticketmaster's botch sale for a Taylor Swift concert. How fans are responding now. No. And Prescott gets away from Quinny Pay, throws across. It's Gallup to the end zone. Touchdown, Dallas. Did you miss the Cowboys game Sunday night? Big D put on an absolute clinic in prime time against the Indianapolis Colts. We've got highlights. And taking a look out there with live cam, very foggy on the roadways. Uh, see some problems out there. We'll be checking in with Steven Cavazos very soon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Monday. It is December 5th, 20 days till Christmas. I know it's time to get that shopping done. I know Mike is like, don't say that already. Uh, the fog not really feeling much like Christmas this morning. It is not. It's muggy. It is. Uh, is there mist at all? Or is it just yeah. the fog right there, now? There's Mike? mist. I had a little bit of mist on the windshield this okay. morning. Um, damp roads. It's been damp ever since yesterday and it's going to stay this way throughout most of the day. And the thing is with this fog, a lot of times dense fog advisories go up until say 9, 10 o'clock. This one goes till noon. Okay. So, so that kind of tells the story, doesn't it? What you see is what you get. Yeah, yeah this is not going anywhere today and this is what it looks like out there at the airport this this view really hasn't changed all that much. It has not gotten any better. Half mile visibility out there at the airport. Still zero Castroville, third of a mile Randolph, half mile Stinson and Pleasanton, which was down to zero just about an hour ago, is now up to a quarter mile. But most everybody is half mile or less around the area. And there is thick fog everywhere you go. Some of the thickest we've seen. It was really thick on Thanksgiving, but this is even, even thicker. And obviously it's going to be sticking around longer. And again, the dense fog advisory covering all of the southern portion of the state far and wide up until noon. Mold is on the high side. I would venture guess it's going to be staying on the high side when the updated count comes out later on this morning and uh, temperatures really won't be moving all that much throughout the rest of the morning. We stay right in the, the mid 50s where you are right now. That's what it's going to feel like. Kind of a damp chill too, just because we have so much moisture out there and then 66 degrees today at noon. If there's a peak of sunshine, Great, but I'm not counting on any sunshine. Just plenty of clouds around here. 70 for a high temperature, so it will be warmer than yesterday and will actually be a couple of degrees above normal. Get used to that phrase because it's going to be warm or downright hot going into the middle part of the week. How about the weekend? Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, any big problems with all the fog? Yes, uh, we do have a problem here. My 35 at Rush Lane. Let's get a closer look at Trans Guide. In fact, we'll let the camera just tell the story there. We do have uh, flashing lights out there. You can't really make them out from this particular shot, but we are seeing some activity out there. This is actually in the southbound lanes of I-35, so you know this is going to cause a lot of trouble for drivers, particularly those that are heading down from New Braunfels into the Alamo City, perhaps. So this is just outside New Braunfels. Again, I-35 in those southbound lanes uh, right near Rush Lane. You can see traffic right now. It almost appears is down to one lane. I'll get our friends at Transguide on the phone, find out exactly what the conditions look like, but let's show you the map because the conditions, unfortunately, are not looking too great there. You can see that slowdown just continuing to stretch there, and it's just not a good area to have a problem, especially at this hour as more folks are getting the commute rolling. 
Thankfully, good news is as we can take you back to the wider look of the map here in the metro area, no major slowdowns to report at least at this point. But I'm keeping a close eye on all these cameras, but we are picking up a lot of the fog out there still. So let's get you back over here to these travel times. I 10 westbound. If you're coming in from any of these communities, still pretty green. It looks like you're in 29 minutes to the Alamo City, a little more than half an hour for our friends coming in from Lavernia on 87 northbound, and it is a 29 minute drive time if you're traveling up from Floresville. So just take your time this morning. Unfortunately, we are going to have to keep a very close eye on this. This will likely lead to big slowdowns for folks on I-35, but we'll see how the morning shapes up. For, but for now, just make sure to watch out for those crews out there. Mark Seff. Thank you, Stephen. Right now, we are keeping an eye on power outages in the area. There were a little over 3,000 people without power earlier this morning, but right now, according to the CPS outage map, looks like we have zero customers without power at this point. It is resolved. It was right there in Leon Valley along uh, Loop 410 a little bit earlier. Well, in just a matter of hours, the trial of a former Border Patrol agent accused of killing four sex workers in Webb County in the Laredo area will continue. The confession of Juan David Ortiz was played for jurors on Friday. He said he wanted to clean up the streets of Laredo. If convicted of capital murder, he faces life in prison without parole because prosecutors are not seeking the death penalty. Testimony resumes this morning at 8.30. KSAT will be streaming those proceedings live. Also happening today, the trial of a former police officer will begin following years of delays. It happened when former Fort Worth officer Aaron Dean was responding to a call about an open front door at a home. We are told that 28-year-old Tatiana Jefferson pulled out a gun after hearing suspicious noises behind her home. Body camera footage showed Dean did not identify himself as a police officer. He quit and was charged with murder. The case has been repeatedly postponed amid issues with lawyers and the pandemic. A major case at the Supreme Court today involving LGBTQ rights. The justices will hear arguments on whether business owners can refuse to provide a service to same-sex couples based on their religious beliefs or free speech. ABC's Derek Dennis reports. The Supreme Court is set to decide whether a public service can be denied based on a person's constitutional right to free speech versus equal LGBTQ rights. It stems from a Colorado case brought by website designer Lori Smith appealing to the Supreme Court not to be fined or otherwise punished under Colorado law for refusing to work on an LGBTQ themed project, saying it would violate her religious beliefs. I'm never refusing a project based on who's requesting it, uh, requesting the work, but the message that I'm being asked to pour my time talents into promoting and celebrating. Colorado's Attorney General Philip Weiser says otherwise. If you're open to the public, you need to accommodate everybody. That's a core of our civil rights law, and it has deep roots in American law. Lori Smith's 2019 lawsuit follows a similar case brought by Colorado Baker Jack Phillips in 2012, who argued he should not be forced to make an LGBTQ-themed cake for a same-sex couple under his First Amendment right to express his own speech. He won the case on a technicality and a narrow ruling. Artem Scardina, a transgender woman, is now suing Smith for violating her rights. As soon as I told him who I was, then it became, I won't sell it to you. Ultimately, the Supreme Court now gets to decide if one right overrides another. What's at stake is the right of every American to be able to speak messages that are consistent with their conscience and to not face government punishment for declining to speak a message that violates their core convictions. If the Supreme Court rules in favor of service providers, it could have a sweeping effect, essentially carving out a legal exemption for business owners to deny any kind of service based on their personal beliefs, giving them an overriding right to say no. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. Well, top of the show, we mentioned 20 days till Christmas. That means the season of giving is here, and there are plenty of ways to help those in need. This morning, we are talking about three local nonprofits to spread some holiday cheer. Sarah Costa is here now with more details on that. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Steph. There are lots of ways to help this holiday season. So let's start with the Soldiers, Soldiers Angels Annual Holiday Stockings for Heroes Project. KSAC Community is teaming up with the local nonprofit to collect over 40,000 holiday stockings for deployed service members, but they still have a ways to go. Donations are being accepted until December 9th. And you have probably heard us talk about SAPD's Share the Shoe Drive. The goal is to provide shoes for kids and teens in need through zapatos. 
They are hoping to beat last year's collection of just over 1,600 pairs of shoes. You can drop off new shoes and socks at SAPD substations and RBFCU banks around town. We have information about both those stories right now on KSAT.com. And for some, the holiday can be a tough time with emotional highs and lows. That's why it's so important to know the warning signs of season depression. Tomorrow, KSAT, along with our KSAT community partners, are hosting a town hall on the topic on the discussion panel. Two mental health care professionals, Ursula Perry, will be the moderator. The town hall begins at 2 p.m. on KSAT.com. And in case you missed leading essay this weekend, we covered an important topic, lung cancer. So one in 16 people will be diagnosed with it in their lifetime, and it's the leading cause of cancer death and the second most common cancer in the U.S. Max Massey and I spoke to a lung oncologist with UT Health San Antonio MD Anderson Cancer Center about the issue in our community and diagnosis. Yes, Dr. Kavanaugh joined us and we talked about a lot. We talked about the community impact, when and how to get screened. We also talked about a lot of myths, a lot of myths that the doctor dispelled. Here's a bit of our conversation. Yes, anytime you inhale something uh, that can be potentially, that is a carcinogen, uh, it can actually cause some damage in the lung, in that lung cell that can, and mutations arise that bring forth that cancer. Um, and then once that, that cancer cell occurs, uh, it actually spreads and grows rapidly. So yes, vaping or any smoking, any inhalation of these uh, uh, chemicals can, can cause lung injury. You can check out our full discussion right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have a Leading SA every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. And Taylor Swift fans are suing after failing to score concert tickets in the pre-sale debacle. They accused Ticketmaster and parent company Live Nation of price fixing and antitrust violations. The fans claims most of the tickets were sold to scalpers so the company could collect extra fees on resale. And Dolly Parton has made her debut on TikTok. Parton's first post featured a dizzying collage of the many sides and many decades of Dolly. She joins TikTok as she prepares for her New Year's Eve special ringing in 2023 with her goddaughter, Miley Cyrus, live from Miami. Right now, 611, 58 degrees. And much more to come on GMSA, including the scary moments a little girl is nearly pulled away from her dad by a wild coyote. The incident all caught on camera. Yeah, everybody's talking about that video. Runners, joggers, and walkers from across the country packed downtown San Antonio for the Rock and Roll Marathon. Just ahead, we'll share the top times and hear from Stephanie, who hit the pavement with the crowds. It was a large crowd, very, very fun. Taking a look out there with live cam, extremely foggy this morning. Be careful on the roadways, and you know what? It's really not that cold. We're at 58 degrees. Time check 615 and unfortunately not a pretty sight here at 35 at Rush Lane. Check that out. We actually have a pretty serious crash that was reported by uh, TxDOT a few minutes ago. Now, uh, I spoke to our friends over at TransGuide earlier. We know that at least one lane of traffic is shut down for right now, but you see traffic is picking up there. 35, I, I talk about it all the time. It's one of the busiest corridors in the area, so we know that hundreds and thousands of people really make their way through there every single day. So we're going to see some delays, and that is exactly Exactly what our map is picking up there again 35 those southbound lanes near rush lane keep in mind the southbound lanes when that issue happens the buildup will continue to span a little bit more which is what we are seeing uh, just outside of new brothels but wider look at the map we take you back into the metro area there really isn't a whole lot else out there thankfully to talk about we do know that road closures will take place so just keep this in mind and make sure that you plan ahead a little bit later I wanted to see if we can get to that there you go state highway 16 bandera road utility work it was taking place and is actually going to be lasting throughout the entire work week. So Friday, December 9th, just keep that in mind. Starts at 9 in the morning, wraps at 3 in the afternoon. We'll see alternating, alternating lane closures in both directions from Loop 1604 to Diamond K Trail. But plan that commute ahead of time. Scan the QR code that is now on your screen if you're still at home. Uh, this will take you to our KSAT traffic page. I just updated the list of current closures from our friends over at TxDOT, so everything is current. And again, just make sure to plan your commute ahead of time. Fantastic. A big hearty congratulations to everybody that ran in this weekend's Rock and Roll Marathon, including yes. our very own Stephanie Yay. Serna. Yay. Thank you so much. So runners packed the downtown area for the Rock and Roll Marathon over the weekend, and the fastest time to complete the full 
marathon, very amazing. For men, was two hours and 26 Jeez. minutes. And for women, two hours and 56 minutes. We have a full list of those results on KSAT.com. Yeah, it was, it was pretty fun. So it, there was the start line. Mm -hmm. uh, you could just see how crowded it was. Then, and that, there was the end. I mean, we're all pretty drenched at the end. It drizzled the whole way through, but it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And a big shout out to all the, the volunteers out there because it's one thing to run in the rain because you're moving, but when you're standing out there giving out water or, or cheering on, you know, your loved ones, that, you know, hats off to you. You and Rooney and then your husband, Luis, was uh, taking the selfie picture there a couple yes. of pictures ago. Yeah. So she brought home the there hardware. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. So Big here's half marathon nice. medal here. This Congratulations. Yeah. There you go. And, and yeah. this is something a lot of people train for, too. Yes. Um, so this is the biggest race probably here in San Antonio. Ta -da. Oh. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, there's the, the full and a half on Sunday and there's a 5k and 10k on Saturday and all the races were very packed and uh, you know a lot of runners you know ran the full marathon in, in the rain all 26 yeah all that miles. moisture came back yeah. in here a lot mm -hmm. quicker than expected so it was just ugh, bless your heart for yeah. running in that stuff everybody that was running in that stuff but so. hats off to you Steph yeah. thank you Thank you so much. Um, it was it was fun. A lot of people, you know, were in a good mood. Um, it was it was it was nice. Nice. It was nice. Yeah. A lot right. of Christmas events going on this weekend. One of them was the uh, opening weekend for Ballet San Antonio, the Nutcracker, and there is that is the Very nice. Oh hey. The scene in the second act, Mother Ginger with the Polly mm -hmm. Chanel's that come out from underneath the I skirt. I think so. you buried the lead, though, Mike, right? Yes, you need to tell people. <laughs> the lead is, that's Mike Osterhage on the right as yes. Mother Ginger. Wow. <laughs> For the 22nd year in a row. Uh, we were counting. I think it's eight years now. Okay, I was close. Eight years I've done that. <laughs> and uh, so that's, yeah, the giant skirt standing and the little Polly <laughs> Chanel's hiding underneath there. So, but it was just fantastic. And uh, four more performances coming up this weekend at the Tobin Friday to Saturday and a matinee on Sunday. Go check it out because it will. I mean, everybody was saying just how much I put them in the uh, in the Christmas spirit there to see the Nutcracker and those folks in the ballet are so talented and just the nicest people in the world as well. All right, it is just uh, it's soupy out there this morning. Best way to put it. And everybody has. I mean, it's rare to have uh, visibility above a quarter mile, a third of a mile there. Randolph, Half Stinson, a little bit. Better Better going up I-10, but zero visibility in Castroville. That's the situation now at Rock Springs. So this thick fog is going to be sticking around all morning long, all the way through up until noon. Dense fog advisory up until noon, and that doesn't mean it automatically just goes away at noon. So we'll still have some of this lingering fog in places and some of that mist and drizzle and low clouds even going into the early afternoon hours. Satellite picture, we had a few of those sprinkly showers around in the past 12 hours, and here's some of the low clouds that are hanging around here. Then one thing to take away from the uh, the big picture, notice how everything is moving just about straight west to east, a zonal air pattern, and that is not really one that brings about any big changes in our weather. And for us, the very cold air obviously staying in the northern portion of the, the country and the warm, humid air with dew point temperatures staying in the 60s down here. So here you have all the temperatures sort of stacked horizontally. We are well above normal and it's going to stay that way. So not much of anything really changes as far as this big, big picture comes about or is concerned. And then it may change a little bit by the first part of next week. There are some indications that we will have somewhat of a front moving through here. First part of next week. I mean, it's still a long ways off, but between now and then again, what you see is what you get, but it is going to get warmer. 66 degrees today at noon. Cloudy, fog, mist. Some of that leftover, even though the uh, dense fog advisory expires right now, is scheduled to expire at noon. We'll still have some leftovers there. 70 for a high temperature today. So we will be about three degrees above normal. Then the next few days, temperatures continue to go up. We're going to be up to 80 on Wednesday, well above where we should be. And those low temperatures are going to be staying. The normal low is mid 40s. So we will be 15, 20, in some cases close to 25 degrees above normal all the way through the rest of the week. Not as warm by the weekend, but still it is going to be on the mild side. Wow, 80. And limited sunshine this week. Mm, well, at least next weekend will seem cooler after hitting 80, right? Hopefully, yeah. I mean, that's still a week away. So, you know, kind of do that with a grain of salt, but fingers crossed with that.
Thank you, Mike. 621, 58 degrees. And how about them Cowboys? Dallas took care of business last night in dominating fashion against the visiting Indianapolis Colts. And it's got fans taking Super Bowl, talking Super Bowl, excuse me, this morning. We're going to roll the highlights coming up. Why hide your skin if Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control? Hide my skin? Not me. Because Dupixin targets a root cause of eczema, it helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of it. Hide my skin? Not me. And for kids ages six months and up, that means clearer skin and noticeably less itch. With Dupixin, you can change how their skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Hide my skin? Not me. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can show more with less eczema. Talk to your child's eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys certainly making a case for themselves to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl this year. Dallas has now enjoyed three straight wins and last night completely dominated the Indianapolis Colts on the national stage. While the Indy did outscore Dallas 10-7 in the first quarter, Cowboys answered quickly and never looked back in a performance that included 33 fourth quarter points. The final from Arlington Cowboys win 54-19. Next up for Dallas is the Battle for Texas. They'll welcome the Houston Texans to AT&T Stadium Sunday at 12 p.m. Speaking of the Texans, Houston also back in action yesterday. This time they got to take on their former quarterback, Deshaun Watson. It was actually Watson's, Watson's first game back on the field after serving that 11-game suspension after more than 30 women accused him of sexual misconduct. Now Houston is having a season to forget, and that trend continued yesterday. Browns defeat the Texans 27-14. Houston is officially eliminated from playoff contention. And time now, 626 and 59 degrees for now. Ahead in our next half hour, the body of a child has been recovered from the Gulf of Mexico after a plane went down over the weekend. We're going to tell you what police know so far about the crash. For those children and those teachers, their breath was taken away. But as an observer, I felt like my breath was taken away. The grieving continues for the 21 lives lost at Robb Elementary. Just ahead, why a group focusing on border the crisis there decided to make a stop in Uvalde this weekend. They need people to step up and say, I'll, I'll take the responsibility of sponsoring these people. As the ongoing violence continues in Ukraine, there are refugees making their way to the United States who are in need. We're going to show you how you can help. No group has stepped up to uh, acknowledge or accept that uh, they're the ones that done it. So, yeah, I call them cowards. This morning, thousands of people in North Carolina without power facing freezing conditions after a power outage. Officers believe the blackout was caused on purpose. Who are the people in your neighborhood? And many of us grew up watching him on Sesame Street. Today, we say goodbye to Bob McGrath and take a look at the legacy he leaves behind. Fog is the order of the day for the metro area as we kick off the first full week of December. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, December 5th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a wonderful weekend and be careful when you head out on the roadways. Uh, Mike Osterhage is here now with an update on that fog advisory. Yeah, not only is the fog really, really thick with mist and drizzle, but then on top of that, it's going to be sticking around all morning long up through at least noon. That's when the uh, fog advisory uh, is scheduled to expire, but you may that doesn't mean everything just automatically goes away right then. So we may still have some leftover. Been watching this camera all morning long. This is the one out there at Broadway at 410. The airport is somewhere over here. You can see a couple of cars there on 410. Now, granted, this camera is on top of the building right there, but still we have very, very low visibility all around the area. 59 is the temperature. 59 is the dew point, which means 100% humidity and with little or no wind. That's why we have all this very thick fog out there and quarter mile visibility. As a matter of fact, it's dropped a little bit there at the airport. Uh, third Randolph, half Stinson, zero visibility, Castroville, 
no matter what direction you go, you're going to run into a lot of thick fog. Some of the thickest fog we've seen this widespread in, I can't remember when the last time we had really thick fog was on Thanksgiving morning, but not as low a visibility as all around the area is what these numbers are right now. And again, the dense fog advisory for all of the area up through noon and wouldn't be surprised the way things are going if in some areas that is actually uh, extended past noon. Mold is on the high side. The updated count is going to be coming out uh, in just about an hour or so. So thick fog, mist. It's chilly. It's not cold out there, but it's that damp chill because of all the moisture in the atmosphere that kind of sneaks down the back of your neck. Cloudy. It is going to be warmer. We make it up to 70 today. And get used to seeing this word warmer and much warmer or just downright hot. Plenty of clouds this week and midweek. We'll see some sunshine limited though, but we're going to be peaking with temperatures on Wednesday getting up to 80. So we will be 10 to 15 degrees above normal for high temperatures. It does get not as warm. Can't say cooler necessarily this weekend because we'll still be on the above normal side. A couple of showers here and there and then low temperatures with all the humidity are going to be staying 15, 20 degrees or more above their respective normals all week long. Weekend details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, you said last hour, half hour yeah. you got some problems. Unfortunately, Mike, we do have a pretty serious problem here. Now, according to TxDOT, uh, we are seeing a major crash reported here along 35, those southbound lanes. Now, uh, because of the fog, and because of this trans guide camera, we're really not able to get a very clear shot of exactly what caused this crash or how many vehicles may be involved. But we are seeing traffic moving through there. I did talk to our friends over at trans guide a little bit earlier. We know that at least one lane is blocked off right now, and you can see that we do have a pretty serious heavy first responder presence out there. So just watch for those crews. As always, we hope everyone's doing OK. But unfortunately, because this is in the southbound lanes of I-35, we're going to see some other problems and that is terms that comes in terms of delays. You see it right there on the map in those southbound lanes. As you approach rush lane on I-35, you will experience a pretty significant pause there. So keep that in mind. I'm going to be looking for different solutions for you, but right now I would just say it's best. Maybe give yourself time or maybe avoid the area if you can. Giving you a wide look at the map. Now we are picking up slowdowns in other areas. For instance, US 90 in those eastbound lanes as you approach uh, 1604 on the far west side and of course 1604 if you're over on the uh, the far northwest side, pardon me, near Holotus. So we're seeing that, and that is normal at this time. But I did also want to get to some travel times here for I-35. Check that out. 53 minutes right now. That is actually 10 more minutes than what I saw about maybe a, a few moments ago. But we are seeing more of that buildup take place. Again, 53 minutes on I-35 southbound if you're traveling in from New Braunfels. Everywhere else, though, thankfully still in the clear. I'll have to keep a close eye on this, but we'll see how this turns out, and hopefully we'll have a better update in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. The Pinal County Sheriff's Office continues to search for a missing University of Houston student who disappeared during a weekend camping trip. Sarah Costa is live in the KSAT newsroom with a description of the student and where he was last seen. Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Steph. Just take a look behind me. Here's a picture of the University of Houston student Amir Ali, who investigators are searching for. He went camping with a couple of friends at Canyon Lake, Texas for the weekend and Friday evening. His friends say they couldn't find him. So here is what we know. He was last seen around 9 p.m. Friday as he headed out to take a walk alone when he didn't come back for a while. His friends told investigators when they went to look for him, they found his clothing and personal items by the lake shore. If you have seen him or know where he may be, you can call the Comal, Comal County Sheriff's Office. That number on your screen right now, 830-620-3400. Investigators have been searching for him since Friday in the Canyon Lake, area, Texas area. Ali's age has not been released by investigators or what year he was in at the University of Houston. So this is a story we are following closely. Just stay with us on air and online for updates on this search. Mark and Steph. Sarah, thank you. The war in Ukraine not over, and there are refugees in need of help. One local man is stepping up, helping a family of four come to the U.S. from Europe. When Stephen Delwo agreed to sponsor the family, he was approved by the Department of Homeland Security almost immediately. He helped the family apply for Social Security benefits and other resources. We have from information on how you can help sponsor a family right now on KSAT.com. Now to Uvalde, where the grieving continues for the victims of the Robb Elementary shooting. A group called Witness at the Border stopped there yesterday to pay respects. The group is traveling along the border to talk about issues. And organizer Carla Barber says she knew it was important to make a stop in Uvalde. And they went to Robb Elementary 
They saw the murals and the cross memorials. Several of the victims' families took time to speak with the group. And in case you missed it, our special 21 Take It is now streaming on our website. It's a one-hour deep dive into the tragedy at Robb Elementary. We honor the 21 lives lost and explore what steps are being taken to make sure something like this never happens again. Watch it on KSAT.com, the KSAT Plus app, and also on the KSAT YouTube page. Some other top stories we're following for you this morning. Vandals with firearms suspected of causing a power outage that plunged about 45,000 customers into darkness amid freezing temperatures. Evidence of sabotage was found at two key electrical substations following the massive blackout. The FBI has been called in to assist. The spokesman for the local public utility says two electrical substations were severely damaged in the attacks and much of the equipment will have to be replaced. That means it could be Thursday until power is completely restored. By the way, all that happening in the state of North Carolina. And divers in Florida have found an airplane that crashed in the Gulf of Mexico on Saturday evening. The body of a child was found inside the cabin of the small aircraft. Took off from Venice Municipal Airport around 7.30 Saturday night. It's believed to have gone down a short while later, about two and a half miles west of Venice. Recreational divers discovered a body in the water that may have been connected to the downed plane. The FAA and NTSB will investigate the crash. And caught on camera the scary moments in Los Angeles when a two-year-old girl was attacked by a coyote. You see right there on the right side of your screen in the circle, the ring security cam shows the coyote running up to the girl and trying to drag her away. Her dad reacted quickly, shooing the animal away. The girl was rushed to a hospital for a rabies shot and is doing okay. Now, if I read right, the dad, the dad also received some bites and he also had to oh, receive the rabies shot as well. Time now, 638 and 59 degrees for now. Coming up next on Good Morning America, new details on the unsolved murders of four college students in Idaho. This morning, the surviving roommates are breaking their silence. That's next on GMA, beginning at 7. And have you ever gone to the store for one item but left with a trunk full of groceries you didn't need? Well, it turns out grocery stores have a secret sauce to get you to spend more money. Just ahead, what you need to know if you're getting ready to head to the store. Well, this morning, the neighborhood is missing one of its most beloved neighbors. Bob McGrath, one of the original cast members of Sesame Street, has passed away at the age of 90. ABC's Will Gans has more on one of the giants in the world of children's television. Who are the people in your neighborhood? For nearly 50 years, he was one of the people in our neighborhood. Bob McGrath, one of only four non-Muppet cast members when Sesame Street debuted on November 10th, 1969. Hi, Bob. Hi. Say hello to Sally. She just moved into the neighborhood. Hi, Sally. McGrath proved to be the perfect foil to Oscar the Grouch, who was orange in the early days of Sesame Street. Boy, wait till I move out. You'll miss me, boy. I'm okay, sorry. okay, okay, Oscar. I'm sorry. McGrath was one of five kids born on a farm in Illinois in 1932. His mother was a pianist and Bob began performing at the age of five. He spent many years on stage until he was recruited by a former fraternity brother from his time at the University of Michigan to join Sesame Street, where he would remain for 46 seasons. In 1989, Charlie Gibson asked him about his legacy. I, I guess the thing I really enjoy working with and for kids um, and, and seeing when a kid gets a new idea and runs with it, seeing what happens to his mind, as a, as a father, you know that's tremendously thrilling. Most when asked about his favorite scenes that he ever filmed for Sesame Street, McGrath said this one, which took place following the death of Mr. Hooper on the show. You're right, Pink Bird. It's, it's, it'll never be the same around here without him. Hmm. But you know something? We can all be very happy that we had a chance to be with him and to know him. Yeah. And to love him a lot when he was here. Six forty four San Antonians and South Texans are so generous. Now is the time to donate to Salvation Army's annual parade of kettles. Local businesses and media compete to raise the most money to help families in need this holiday season. From now through midnight on Christmas Eve, KSAT will be competing to raise the most money to help families in Bear County and all year long, all year long rather. You can scan the QR code. It will take you to our donation page. And thank you in advance. 
The holidays are here and the average American family will spend about $231 for holiday food and decorations alone. As you head to the grocery store, there are some things to keep in mind. First, grocers greet you with huge sale items and those deals put you in the mood to find more deals. Strategically placed eye candy can also get you to load up your cart. Colorful flowers, freshly baked bread, or fresh produce are designed to activate salivary glands and put customers in a good mood. Check, check, and check. Yes, and placing produce in the front can also manipulate your mind into think that, thinking that since you're starting shopping with healthy choices, it's okay to justify buying junk food later. Check. Oh, right, me too. Also, brands will often pay extra money to be stocked at eye level. Mm -hmm. And the holy grail of marketing, products that are placed on the ends of those aisles. Those items often sell eight times faster than products inside the aisles. Quarter till, let's check on traffic at 645. And you have to have focus when you go to these stores, right? And if you go with someone that is easily swayed a certain way, it does make it a little bit tricky and a fun trip to the grocery store. Fun. Well, uh, <laughs> yes, if you are making your trip down I-35 this morning, better news to talk about here. It doesn't look like we are seeing any further issues. Now, earlier, if you're just waking up with us, we actually had a pretty serious crash. It lasted about maybe 40 minutes or so. That was impacting at least one lane of traffic. But now we are seeing traffic in those southbound lanes open in all directions. So that's good. Uh, all three lanes are open at this point, but still pretty foggy out there. Taking you right to our map. So the crash is clear, but we are still seeing some residual slowdown take place. Uh, that is probably going to stay there for a few minutes longer, only because of the traffic that was probably already building due to that crash. Now that we are seeing a wide look at the map, slowdowns are what we can expect at this point. And just make sure to plan your commute as you get out the door this morning. This is always anticipated. We will see slowdowns along US 90 on the far west side, as well as 1604 on the northwest side as well. 281, take your time up there. It seems like we are seeing a little bit of a cluster, but other than that, still about an hour drive time if you're trending into the Alamo City from I-35 southbound. Just went down a little bit. We'll see if we can get back in the green, but now that morning rush is here, I'm pretty sure we're going to see a lot more of what we saw on the map. Lots of red. Okay, if you were in Bernie this weekend for the big Christmas parade, you might have seen a familiar face to our left. It was wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. It was just fantastic. This is my wife. She, we were uh, in, a, in a Bronco right there, and uh, she was shooting all the video. And this is as we were just getting in. The streets were lined. That whole, you know, hill country mile, five, six, seven people deep all along the street right there. And we were getting in, and it was just fantastic. Friday night, I was in the uh, ballet <laughs> again. Those are little Polly Chanel's that hide underneath Mother Ginger's skirt. And that's you. And that's, that's me. Oh, wow. Not under the skirt. That's you up top. Up dancing, mm -hmm. yes. Those are great moves. Thank you very much. I practice that every year round. So the not the um, Tony nominated Mike Oster. <laughs> he did well. But he did well. Anyway, what a fun weekend! All Christmas Eve. Yeah, all Christmas Eve. Uh, the ballet has four more performances coming up this weekend over there at the Tobin. That'll get you in the Christmas spirit yeah. as well. So, but oh my gosh, that Bernie Christmas parade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all the feels, right? That it was oh, a fun weekend. Oh, nice. Yes. And big shout out to uh, not only the fire department, they let us park there, but Matt, I was talking with him, one of the firefighters there, who decorates Santa's okay. sleigh. And he was showing off all of his uh, decorations of his house as well. In the so in the Texas Hill Country. Speaking yeah. of Santa Claus, guess who we got to chat with Friday, uh, Saturday oh, night? Oh my gosh. I love this. The man himself, yes. Putting in a good word and trying to. How's, how's that working out? Uh, so far, so good. good. He, said good. That, <laughs> he said that Stephen and Steph were on the good list. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Steph, high five. Uh, yes, high five. Don't get <laughs> cheap on me, Santa. I want a bigger, <laughs> a bigger piece of coal this year. Yes. You already, got, you need that for your uh, your smoker. Right. So anyway, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you all to everybody there in Bernie. It was so much fun. I just can't get over that one. All right, it is just yuck out there, and we have got a ton of fog. If visibility, most everybody is less than a quarter of a mile in and around the metropolitan area. Slightly better heading out toward the hill country, but that's uh, not good. And everybody has very thick fog all around this morning. Dense fog advisory up until noon, and that doesn't mean it's going to go away right at noon. So we may still have some leftover fog even. Uh, after that, there's some of the low clouds moving on in here, but it's really hard to see, obviously, this fog on the infrared satellite picture. And again, one thing to take away from this national satellite shot is notice how everything is moving straight west to east, zonal pattern. So what that means is you don't get any real changes to what the weather we have right now. 
First of all, starting off with dew points and the humidity, that's not going to be changing throughout the rest of the week. We're going to keep these dew points well up into the uh, 60s, which means low temperatures can't get below that. So it's going to be really, really warm in the mornings. And then as far as temperature readings. The other thing to take away from this is everything is stacked pretty much horizontally. Very cold to the north, much milder down to the south. That doesn't change either because Again, there's nothing as far as a good push coming down here from Canada. So we get these upper level wind lines moving just about straight west to east all the way through the rest of the week. A lot of humidity around here as well. Hopefully by next week and we're got to jump into past the weekend and first part of next week that there's going to be more of a trough developing out here to the west. And there is some thinking that that may pull down some colder air than finally by the first part of next week. Still a week away, still a lot can change between now and then, but between now and then, it's going to stay very hot and very humid. 66 degrees today at noon and 70 for a high temperature. Normal high is 67 right now, so a few degrees above normal. And when I say hot, that's referring to the middle part of the week. We get up to 80 on Wednesday, well above normal. Not as warm by the weekend, but still very cloudy, very humid. Low temperatures remain 15, 20 degrees above normal or even more than that. A couple of showers, morning mist and fog the next few mornings, and a couple of showers in here by the weekend. We're just hoping for more sun at this point. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of it. Next couple of days, some, but yeah, don't don't bank on a whole bunch. Okay, Mike, we'll Thank wait you. for it. Thank you, sir. 651, 59 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, a look at the best and worst foods to eat if you have osteoporosis, what you need to know to stay healthy and strong. Outside with Lycan, the sun is trying to come up, but we've got a ton of fog out there right now. Please be careful on your way to work or school or wherever you are going, going this morning. Be right back. Coming up this morning on GMS 8 and I, we're getting a behind the scenes look at the operations underway at Toys for Tots headquarters. Max Massey will be joining Marines from the 4th Reconnaissance Battalion and community volunteers as they organize all of the donations they have received from their annual toy drive. So tune in for that and much more today on GMSA at 9. Time now, 6.55. Let's go ahead and check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Morning rush is here, and we are right here at Rush Lane on I-35. Traffic is moving, but uh, without any trouble, I would say, but still a slowdown. We did have a crash reported there, and, and it seems some improvement there on I-35 South and at Rush Lane, but just watch out. Again, that crash is cleared, but we still have a few slowdowns. Now that we give you the wide look at the map, and that's expected, we're going to see that in and around the Alamo City as folks are making their way to San Antonio and getting their work week started. And as you head off to get your work and school week started, boy, take it easy. This is what it looks like over there. This picture has not changed 410 over by the airport. Visibility remains extremely low all around the area. As a matter of fact, it dropped a little bit there in Randolph. Dense fog advisory up until noon and temperatures are on the mild side compared to normal, but it's sort of that dampish chill out there. 70 for a high temperature later on today. It is going to get much, much warmer middle of the week and then back to the low 70s by the weekend. But just take it easy. This fog is going to be hanging in some places even early afternoon. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Be careful of the drivers out there. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you back here at 9. Updates throughout GMA.